Yes, Mike, we are. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Um, let me just stop uh, sharing. Uh, yeah, I already shared, stop sharing, I guess. Okay, sorry. Yep, I can, we can see it. And Adam, you have an email. Perfect. Okay, all your skills up, thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so everyone, my name is Gilda Hilaire. Uh, I've been with Salesforce for, uh, it's coming up a year. But prior to joining Salesforce, I was actually a customer for well over I mean, 13, 14 years. Um, focused on using what you guys now call Marketing Cloud. It used to be um, exact target. It used to be exact target, the email marketing solutions tool. There was all sorts of branding that went into exact target, but my entire, you know, career has been in email marketing deliverability, um, to the point where, uh, I don't know if a lot of, if you follow me on LinkedIn, but on LinkedIn, I also share my knowledge, um, which I think is something that's very important to do is to share knowledge. Um, but I share and I write thought leadership pieces on um, marketing cloud, on AmpScript, on implementation, because it's important for the community to understand not only how to use a platform, but it's also important to understand the strategy of email marketing, um, which is why I thought it would be best before we dive straight into Salesforce Marketing Cloud, which, I'm, which is why we're all here is to learn about the platform, what's most important is for you to understand um, the anatomy of an email. What is email marketing, right? Because you don't want your brand to just be, I, you know, I'm certified in marketing cloud. You want to also understand programmatically, systematically, um, what happens, you know, after I build an email, what are the best practices, what are the customers seeing? Um, that's also important for you to know because you might one day need to troubleshoot an email that has gone out and the troubleshooting isn't necessarily in the platform. The troubleshooting might have to do with the ISP itself, right? So it's, it's important for you to know more than just the platform, but the overall anatomy of the email, which is why, which is what we're going to discuss now. Um, so I've really broken this up into three different sections, the delivery process, the creative process, and the overall sending process. All right. So what is the delivery process? Well, when you think about, um, you know, the email marketing process, um, there's four components, right? There's the marketer, right? And the marketer is who you're marketing to. Um, and what they're receiving. Um, there's the email service provider, um, and the email service provider is um, exact, which is the marketing cloud. And then there's the internet service provider. The internet service provider is Gmail, Yahoo, um, you know, AT and T, um, MSN. And then there's the subscriber. The subscriber being you know, the email that address that you've received. So we're gonna go through that delivery process because it's important for you to get into the weeds so you have an overall fundamental knowledge around this to help make sure that you're better educated um, around some of these topics. So the email marketer, um, that's us, right? We're the, not only, the, are we the email marketer, but we sometimes are the subscribers, right? We are the ones that sometimes, you know, if I look at this picture here, Brooks is a shoe company. We're the marketers that are, that's behind building the overall campaign, but a lot of times also the ones that have probably opted in to receive the email from Brooks, the, the shoe company, right? So we're the ones that's behind the build, we're the ones that's behind the creative concept, we're the ones that are behind the sending and the testing of the email, right? So this is a perfect example of an email. 
when you look at this email at the very top, it's the UC where it says Brooks, which is the overall branding of the email. Behind that, you see this beautiful picture which shows three sneakers, right? And then you have the body of the email. But you have to understand there's a lot of creative concept. There's a lot of strategy that goes into play behind this email. Um, as an email marketer, you have to decide the placement of the image. You have to decide the size and the dimensions of the logo. You have to decide and discuss with the strategy team. What do you want the body copy to say? Um, do you want it to be text? Do you want it to be HTML? Um, even when you look at the button at the bottom where it says let's launch, um, while this may look like a simple, a simple button, right? And it does, it's a simple button, but there are a lot of testing and strategy that goes behind. Do we want the color to be blue? Do we want circle? Um, do we want rounded corners? Um, if you notice when you receive an email, pay close attention, especially if you've signed up um, to receive like your favorite clothing store, your favorite shoe store or grocery store. Over time, um, make it a point to look at the design of the email. You know, you'll you'll start to realize like the buttons start to change. Some emails will have an arrow as part of the CTA button. You'll notice the font will change. The placement of the image will change. You'll notice um, instead of using a single column, they're using a two column layout. Um, it, it's important because, you know, what goes into building an email is a lot. Um, and you want to understand fundamentally um, the strategy behind it because you as the email marketer that's building the email, you have a say in deciding and, and pausing what you're doing and saying, wait a second, the font that you're submitting to me now is different than the font I've used in the past. Are we doing, uh, was this by mistake? Are we testing the font? Or you might also suggest, hey guys, I have an idea. Let's do an A-B test on the button. I've noticed that we've used the same button and I've noticed that the CTA is low on the button. So let's do a, 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 a A-B test. So that's why it's important for you to understand um, you know, the breakdown of an email because you, know, you have um, decisions to make as well as the marketer that's doing the send. And everything here that you see on the right-hand side this is a header, and my hope is that after the session, you'll go back to your inbox and you'll open it and you'll say, oh, wow, I didn't notice all this, you know, this, this we, we'll just call it junk at the very top. But everything you see here has a meaning behind it, right? Everything you see here, the ISP, um, which is the Gmails, the Yahoo's, the MSNs of the world, they need this information, right? It looks like a whole bunch of junk, but this tells them who is sending the email. It tells them the sender IP. So this 69.166.148.42, it's important, right? This is the IP address of the sender. It also tells them what is the domain. It also tells them that it passed the deacon keys, right? It also tells them is it secure. It tells them the header. It tells them the SPF records. So all this information here is important um, information for the ISPs to have as part of the email, right? In order for your recipient um, or the subscriber to receive the email. If any of these records, like if this, if anything where the deacon says fail, your subscriber is probably not going to receive the email. So it's important again for you to understand this header information is important for you to understand the overall body of the email um, as, as the email marketer of the platform. Hopefully I haven't lost anyone. Um, so next we wanna look at the delivery process. The email header, sorry, let me take a step back. I was moving my slides wrong. So next, um, you wanna look at what is the email header, right? Um, so for the subscribers, what's imp always important is who sent the message. 
Um, I think you guys have probably seen it when Salesforce sends a message, it's coming from, you know, Salesforce, right? Who is it going to? So that too is, that too is, you know, you as a subscriber, as the person who was signed up. As a market, it's important for you to know what the subscriber sees and what, um, and understand what the server sees. So this is important to your overall email marketing strategy. Um, the reply to is when you look at your inbox and you look at all these email emails coming from all these B2C companies, um, if you were to receive an email and you didn't sign up for the email, you're probably going to hit reply. And that inbox is either monitored or it's not monitored. Email best practice is you want to have, you want to make sure that the inbox is monitored. But understanding who the reply to is important because you have a decision to make. Are we going to use um, somebody at our organization's inbox, um, like a live inbox that somebody is going to monitor so that if our customers have complaints or have questions that somebody is literally going to monitor the, the mailbox or, and some companies do that, they'll come up with like a, 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 a I'll call it a, a a non-active mailbox so that if you as a recipient reply back, it's gonna to go to a black hole. That's against email best practices, but that happens a lot. And most importantly, it's the subject line, right? Why is the subject line important? Well, the subject line is really what'll get your subscribers to, to open your, your email. So you wanna put a lot of thought into what is used as part of the subject line. Do you wanna ask a question? Now we see a lot of people using um, emojis in their subject lines, so on your subject line and you know who the email is coming from is extremely important. Um, and those are really the things that a lot of the subscribers look for when they receive a message. And then for the servers, right? And the servers being, you know, what about Gmail, Yahoo? What do they look for? So if you remember all this junk I said on the right-hand side, it's part of the header, this is it right here, the return path, where a reply to message will be sent. So this ties back to this. So if somebody does reply back, where is it gonna go to? The IP address. In Marketing Cloud, every single, um, every single um, business unit, Every single enterprise has an originating IP address. You can have, and you guys will go through this later on in the in the um, weeks, but you can have multiple business units, and each business unit will have its own IP address. IP address is extremely important to um, your marketing cloud business unit and your campaigns. Um, received all the servers, the messages went through. Um, when you hit the send button, it's a process. Um, it goes through several servers before it, your recipient will receive it. And then the SPF is the sender policy framework. This is really just validating the sender's authorized server. Um, and the DCOM, these are the domain keys that's identified through the sender. So the SPF and DCOM, especially in the marketing cloud, a lot of this is handled between um, Salesforce deliverability team and your IT team. So when you first set up your marketing cloud account and you get an IP address, they're going to um, work together to ensure that the SPF and the Deacon keys are hosted. And then they'll perform a couple of tests in order to make sure that it will pass and that it will um, successfully um, get accepted by the ISPs. So the email service provider, um, for us here, it's the marketing cloud, right? That is the ESP that you will be introduced to in the next, next couple of classes. That's the ESP that you're going to use to build your emails, send your emails, track the email campaigns, 
load your list, um, personalize the campaigns, but all that exciting stuff is going to happen right here in the ESP. So whenever you hear somebody say, you know, what ESP are you using? Um, it stands for email service provider and just know that that means that you're using marketing cloud. Um, another example, we're not discussing that today, but marketing cloud is used for a lot of B2C campaigns. And then another, another ESP that Salesforce that's under the Salesforce umbrella is Pardot. So Pardot would also be considered an ESP for B2B. So now um, I will try not to confuse everyone, but we could certainly dive more into this later on um, during Q and A. So from the standpoint, from your standpoint, email seems very simple. You set the email address to the person who you want to send the email. You compose the email in the marketing cloud and you click send. All done. Um, but in reality, sending a message off um, is like going into the deep dark woods and not knowing what you're going to find. You just never know what's going to happen. When you send an email, um, a series of processes takes place behind the scenes before your email reaches your subscriber's inbox. The send process usually happens in a matter of seconds, but sometimes depending on the size of the send, it can take minutes, it could take hours. Though know, you cannot control the process, knowing what occurs can help you understand why your send executes immediately or some of them takes longer to send. So at the very top, um, where you see it, you know, with the email icon, this is where you would build your email coming out of the marketing cloud. And then you will have a set list of subscribers that the email is going to. But then right here below, when an email is sent, the message is routed from server to server all the way to the recipient's email server. More specifically, the message is sent to the mail server tasked with transporting the emails, which is called the MTA, which is stands for the Mail Transport Agent, to the recipient's MTA. What all of this really means is that, what I want you to get out of this is that although you send the email out of the marketing cloud and you know this is the list of subscribers, just know that it does get routed from server to server to server through this MTA process. Um, this is like the big communication engine that happens and that really looks at all of the stuff that I showed you here. It looks through all of that, all the validation of who's sending the email, the domain, is it, is it, um, is it you know, safe to receive this campaign? So just understand that the email service provider, which is the marketing cloud, it takes the email, you compose the email, you send it to the subscriber, but then it uses this mail transport agent in order to talk to the other, um, to the other servers. And the other server that the ESP talks to is, again, not to confuse everyone, is called the ISP. Um, the ISP is, one of our favorite is Gmail. Um, so Gmail is, um, so Gmail is what um, is one of the biggest ISPs out there. Um, so what you want to get out of this one is that when you think about the ISP, right? An example, like I said, is Gmail, Outlook.com, Yahoo, or Inbox by Gmail is also considered um, an ISP. The reason it's important to know that is because the email leaves the marketing cloud, it goes to these set accounts, right? But the ISPs, they have a special computer called mail servers, which you see below here. The mail server is responsible for collecting all the emails from their customers, 
So when you click that send button from the IS from the ESP, ESP being Marketing Cloud, your computer or the Marketing Cloud connects to the mail server and transmits the messages along with the list of recipients, right? And this message is transported calling, you know, using something called the simple mail transport protocol, which is just a language that your mail program uses to speak to the mail server. Um, why I want you guys to know a lot of this is because I, I worked at an organization um, several years ago and um, we sent an email, not we, somebody from an organ the organization sent an email on a Friday at 5 p.m. And um, it had two, they used two sentences for the subject line um, and they used one big image for, um, they used one big image for the body of the email. What ended up happening is the email left, right? It left the marketing cloud. Well, back then it was exact target. It tried to hit these accounts, but guess what? The minute it tried to ping the mail servers, right? Like Gmail, Yahoo, it got blocked, right? The reason it got blocked by the mail servers is because it looks suspicious. It looked like it was, because it was one big image, because it was using two subject lines for the, um, the subject line, it looked like it was a suspicious email. It looked like it was a, an attack um, going out to customers. And that email was supposed to go out to about 400,000 customers and the mail servers blocked it, right? The mail servers then went back and flagged um, exact target and said that um, they're blocking this email because it looked very suspicious. So that's why sharing this information with you is, was really important for me because um, it's important to understand, well, what happens after I hit the send button? Why is it that my email isn't um, going through? It's important for you to understand that, you know, you as the marketer, you're building the email, but then there's two heavy hitters from the ESP to the ISP that needs to validate that um, it needs to validate the information here, right? The from, the to, the reply to, the subject line, and it needs to know the IP address. It needs to confirm and validate um, that the sender is an authorized server, that it is the deacon keys and the security behind the email. Is, 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 is safe and it needs a IP address to make sure it's not coming from a suspicious, suspicious IP address. Because um, if you think about it, there are a lot of, um, we're having a lot of cybersecurity issues. There are a lot of um, hackers that are trying to get into somebody's inbox just to steal their information. So understanding the server information, understanding the subscriber information, is extremely important in understanding, you know, what happens when I hit the send button um, as the marketer, what happens when it goes from being the ESP to the ISP. Um, and then finally, it's the subscriber, right? The subscriber is the individual that you are sending the email to, the person that has signed up on through your website that has signed up through an online form or an online forum to receive emails from you, right? So what happens is after um, it goes through the ESP and then the ISP accepts the email, uh, the subscriber will then see this in their inbox, right? This is from Brooks Running. Um, the, the launch six collections is a go. This is the subject line. Um, and this is um, pre-header text. And then when they open the email, right, this is what they would see in their inbox. And then when they open the email, um, it's to Eric J. Hannon. This is um, who's coming from subject line. It was received date and time. 
and this is what they're seeing. Was the email successful? Yes, it was successful because um, Eric J. Hannon received it in their inbox. So in review, um, what I wanted you to get out of this is, what is an ISP? What, what is something in the email header, in the email header the subscriber would see? What is the market, the Salesforce marketing cloud? And what language is the body of an email in? Those are really the top four things um, I want you to um, get out of the first half of the of the session is really understanding if somebody says ISP that you understand the terminology and fundamentally what is meant. Um, the email header, why it's important for you as the marketer to really have a strategy around the email header, especially in the marketing cloud. Um, there are some marketing cloud instances. I, I used to um, run an email team years ago and that team had 22 child accounts in the marketing cloud and each child account had a different um, had a different email header they had a different ip address different sender profile so each everything is different it can be customized differently in the marketing cloud so it's important for you to understand what that overall email header strategy will be for the different accounts and what is the marketing cloud, which you know is, is the email service provider that you will be using, and what language is the body of the email in? It's really HTML format or is it really text? So we've made the connections where you as the marketer build your email in the marketing cloud, which is the email service provider. And then when you hit the send button, you understand that it pings various servers before it finally hits the internet service provider, which is the ISP, which is Gmail, inbox by Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo. And then what your, the overall goal is to make sure that that email that you spent all day building um, hits your subscriber. So this is just a picture of what happens um, connecting the two. Um, connecting the two where you, the ESP goes from ESP to ISP. And something for you to also understand is, even though you may send the email, even though you may send the email, um, when a recipient or your, your subscriber receives the email, they can also unsubscribe from the email campaign, right? Um, and in addition to that, even though the email hits the ISP, it could also bounce back for several reasons. Um, some of those reasons could be that the person no longer has the email address, right? The person no longer has the email address, or for whatever reason, Gmail is very tricky, and a lot of us are still trying to understand the algorithm they use. There are times where I have two Gmail accounts and I could send a test email to myself. One of them will go to spam um, or junk, and then the other one will go into my inbox. It's just a weird algorithm that Gmail uses. I don't think anyone's been able to understand that secret sauce just yet. But just understand that in the ISP, even though the email hits the inbox, it could still go to spam, it could still go to junk, but most importantly, we want it to go to the inbox but it's not always guaranteed. Um, again, it goes just through various, various servers before it determines whether or not this email um, would hit the, um, the marketer's inbox. So this is another lovely picture. <laughs> um, hopefully I'm not confusing everyone, but you're going from the ESP to the ISP and then the um, end result is that you want the email to go into your your um, subscriber's mailbox. And what happens, right, when they open it, the lovely email? When they open the email, they click on the link, or they unsubscribe, guess what? Everything that happens 
is captured in the marketing cloud, right? So the marketing cloud, which you guys will learn later on in these sessions, um, is tracking when the email was sent, when the email was open, um, when the email was sent, when the email, um, when the email is sent, when it was clicked, if the person unsubscribed, and it also captures the time that all of these things happen, right? Did the person open the email in the morning? Did the person open the email? Um, it's not who opened the email as well. So you'll a, be able to, to kind of tie that back to their, um, to their email address. And a lot of times the recipient might not receive the um, email because their mailbox is full, the email address changed, they closed their account, um, but all of that would be captured in, um, in the marketing cloud. It'll also be captured a click versus an unsubscribe. So a click is when somebody clicks on the link. For example, you as an email marketer, where you see this Brooks logo, if you want, you can make that clickable so that when a person clicks on it, it brings them to the Brooks um, homepage or website um, that's captured in the marketing cloud. And then at every single email, email marketing best practice, can't spam law, you have to have a way for your members to unsubscribe. Um, so you would wanna make sure that there's somewhere language there where they can opt out. That's also, um, that's also captured in the marketing cloud. So in review, um, what I want you to walk away with is really understanding what is the reason an email would not reach the inbox? What do you call an email that is returned to the ESP from the ISP? What is the difference between a click and an unsubscribe? And what is the email sending protocol? So we'll just go take a step back. So the reason email would not reach the inbox, as I mentioned before, is it boils down to the email address. Um, so another tip I would give you guys is you as the email marketer, after you send the email, it is so important for you to go back and look at tracking. There are people that I know um, when I was a customer, they would send an email and they would walk away. <laughs> um, not me. I would send an email and I would you know, wait an hour and an hour after I would go back and I would look at tracking. I would look at my opens, clicks, and subscribe. Very important. If you see high, and I would also look at deliverability. If you see that there are a lot of bounces, right, that's happening, there's something wrong with your deliverability, right? And the deliverability could be that there's something wrong um, the email is being blocked by Yahoo or Gmail, or why is it being blocked by Yahoo but by Gmail? This means that you as the marketer have to go back and look at the email design. Is there something in the email design that's causing the emails to be blocked? Is there something wrong with your IP address, right? Like why is there a high bounce rate? Why is the deliverability rate so high compared to other emails? Um, and if you see a lot of people unsubscribing, but well, why are so many people unsubscribing? This is not normal. Um, so you as a marketer, you know, it's really important for you to go back after you sent an email and really make sure that your opens and clicks are normal and that you really don't, you don't have a high bounce rate and you don't have a high um, unsubscription that's happening. Um, you can't really see through the marketing cloud if um, your emails are going to junk. There's, a, there's no um, there's no label in there in the marketing cloud that says you know how many percentages is going to junk. That's why you really have to look at deliverability, look at your open rate, click through rate, and um, your bounce rate. Hopefully, you guys are still following along. Um, so my favorite part is the creative process. And I don't know how many of you on the call um, love designing, building emails. But the creative process, to me, is what really is the meat 
of the your email, right? You're part of that creative team that's building that aha moment for your customers. Um, for example, I early this morning I ordered something on Macy's, and Macy's, for example, um, is going to base my order. I guarantee is going to base my order on future email campaigns that um, that um, I will see in the next coming weeks, right? They know that Gilda just placed an order for a couple of makeup items. So now Macy's has in my database my order history. So they're going to tailor my journey, my experience with Macy's based on what I've ordered today. So as part of the creative process, you have to understand, you know, what are you going to use as part of the real estate space? So if you look at this open table email, right, you notice this image here, that's maximizing um, Al's place is looking forward to seeing you. So Al's place is maximizing the top half of the email, right? So decision was made around what image should we use. <laughs> Right, a decision was made around what font should we use? Should we use this red font to view or modify reservations? Should we use an arrow, no arrow? This open table logo, how big do we want it? Where do we want it to be placed? And what about this bottom, right? When we look at these four images, I guarantee you these four images are based on the recipient's zip code, the recipient's food preference, and it's based on um, the recipients um, selected as their food choices or food options when they set up their profiles. Um, also on the right hand side, this clothing line, it's also the same thing. A lot of personalization goes into play um, when it comes to the creative process. And most importantly, you don't wanna build your email for website you want to build your email for email you also want to make sure that the emails that you're building that they're responsive for the various devices that everyone is using so stage one um, when you think about an email um, we've spoke about this before but the from name from name has the greatest impact on any email campaign right this tells you it really helps with whether your email is open, deleted, or marked as spam, right? If I didn't sign up for TravelZoo and I see an email from TravelZoo, I'm gonna delete it or I'm gonna mark it as spam because I didn't sign up for TravelZoo. So it's really important when you guys are working on these campaigns to ask the question of who is the email coming from? Because in the marketing cloud, you can customize who the email's coming from, right? So it's important to, to know who the email is coming from and the consistency of it. You also don't want to change who the email is coming from because as I mentioned earlier, this has the greatest impact. And anytime somebody goes into marketing and see an email, they don't know who it's coming from. They can mark it as spam or delete it, which impacts overall deliverability. Pre-headed text should be really short, should be eye-catching, but it really gives your subscriber a teaser of what to of why. It answers the question of why do I want to open this email? So it's important to really have some good pre-header text in your um, email campaign, which will really help them to open the email. And then most importantly is the subject line. You want to keep it short and simple, 20 to 40 characters. The ISPs like Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, they also take that into consideration. As I mentioned earlier, um, I had an email that was blocked um, and the organization was blacklisted because the email address used two sentences as part of the subject line, which is against email best practices. So you as the marketer, you really want to put some thought into the email envelope because that is the first thing that your subscribers will see when they receive um, when they receive the the email and the body copy people don't read emails they scan um, 
I don't know about you, but I am a skinner. I don't have a lot of time today to read emails. I really pay attention to who the email is coming from. I pay attention to the pre-added text. I look at, I'll scan the image, and most importantly, what's in it for me? Am I getting a, what's the call to action, right? Am I getting 25% off um, this item, 50% off, 75% off? What is, what is that thing that you're offering me that's gonna make me want to, you know, buy or, or um, go to your website, right? I'm scanning. So you wanna make sure that, since somebody, since you know that your marketers are scanning your emails, you want to make sure that you use bullets. You want to make sure that you have an eye-catching headline. You want to make sure that the call to action is clear and it's obvious, right? And then you want to make sure if you have social media, if you use Twitter, if there's Twitter or LinkedIn tied in, you want to make sure that that's also part of the body copy um, that's used. Again, very important for you guys to know this before you start building an email because you don't want to get to a point where all you're doing is building and you don't understand the overall strategy behind um, email marketing or the email builder, email design. Um, so going back to a statement I made earlier, um, can't spam compliance. Um, you do not want to send an email out ever <laughs> without making sure that you're complying with the can't spam law. Can't spam law says you have to have, especially for commercial emails, you have to have an opt-out mechanism. You do not want to get caught where you're sending out commercial emails, which is offering somebody a which, you, which means that you're really selling something or advertising, promoting something without having a way for your subscribers to opt out. Um, you also want to have a physical mailing address as part of the body copy of the email, and that is the address of the organization that's sending the email. Um, you also want to have a message around um, around uh, letting them know if they no longer want to receive this newsletter, this is what you want them to do. You want them to unsubscribe. Um, and some companies have language that said to unsubscribe from all, um, reply to this email with unsubscribe as the subject line. Um, what ends up happening with that is some companies, they have a way where the minute somebody replies with unsubscribe, it'll unsubscribe them from, all communications. Um, all in all, what I want you to get out of this is per can spam, you have to have these languages in the body copy of your email. You never want to get caught sending out commercial emails without a way for your customers to unsubscribe without having that physical address and without a way for them to unsubscribe from everything. Personalization. Um, so as an email marketer, you also, um, as part of the email marketing strategy, you also want to figure out a way, how do I personalize my message? I don't know about you guys. I'm a huge Starbucks fan. And whenever I go to my regular Starbucks, they know my name and they know um, what my order is. I love that. I love that personalization. Um, when we think about birthdays, right? How many of us have received a birthday greeting, a birthday offer, um, or even an anniversary where somebody's saying, you know, I know sometimes thanks and other stuff, they send like a happy anniversary, you know, you know, five years of being a loyal member, right? That's all personalization, right? And you want to figure out a way as part of your email marketing strategy is how do we personalize the message, right? And the personalization could be, we could use name, we could use gender, we could use location, we could use dates, interests, purchases to personalize the message. It could be 
you know, hello, comma, Gilda. And based on the fact that I'm a female um, and I'm located in Boston, Massachusetts, um, you know, some of these B2C companies can send me messages based on that. Um, a holiday that's big for us that's coming up is Memorial is Memorial Day, right? So I would expect that in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to start seeing um, email messages for Memorial Day. Um, I have a 16-year-old daughter, Mother's Day is Sunday. I've already started receiving Mother's Day greetings and Happy Mother's Day because they know based on my profile with that company, they know that I have a daughter, I am a mother, or even if I'm not a mother, there's somebody special in my life that I consider as a mother or my own mother that I'd want to, you know, buy something for. So you always want to think about as an email marketer, what are the various ways that we can personalize the information based on data that we have? And I know tomorrow's session and Thursday's session, you're going to be diving into data. So keep that in mind because it's important for you to be able to maximize the information that you have and tie that back in with the creativity of your email campaign. And we've spoken about this, but I, you know, it's it's funny, but a lot of um, a lot of marketers they build emails and they forget all about mobile, <laughs> um, or they'll build a website and forget about that mobile experience. Nine times out of ten, um, and I don't have the stats, and um, I should have the stats. You know, nine times out of ten, most of us are on our mobile phones checking email, responding back to emails. Um, so you really should be designing and building your emails on desktop, but know that your subscribers are looking at them on their phone. So you wanna make sure that you are building the email so that they're responsive. And you don't wanna build so that it's responsive on just one device. I know Apple has most of the Apple iPhone has most of the, the shares for mobile. But you want to also build it because there are some people that aren't on an iPhone, that have an Android. Or I know um, some people still have Blackberries, right? So you want to make sure when you build an email that you're, it doesn't have to be 100%, but you just want to make sure that you're not forgetting about mobile. So all in all is what part of the email has the greatest impact on whether your email is open, what is the difference between the subject line preheader, what are the key parts of the email footer um, for can spam compliance, open an email, what is the call to action? Those are the four things that I really wanted you guys to get out of um, the session that we just went through. All right, so we've built the email. Um, we've personalized the email, we've added some of our creativity to the email. Now what, right? We're all excited, we're ready to press that button and let the email rip. We want it to let it go. But <laughs> don't make some mistakes that I've seen other people make. It's really a three-step process. And I have another story. Um, I've worked in an organization where this woman was ready to take her vacation. She was looking forward to it. She was long overdue for a vacation. She built an email and she hit the send button. The, the, the problem is, is she didn't preview. She didn't proof. She just hit the send button. And what ended up happening is she sent an internal email to external audience. And when you send an email out of the marketing cloud, you can't retract it. It's not Gmail. It's not Outlook. You can't call it back. Once it goes out, it goes out. Um, she was in a rush, and she, you know, she had to admit, you know, that she was in a rush. She didn't follow a three-step process. She just wanted to hit the send button. Um, so I want you guys to really be careful you know, and make sure that you, you, you save enough time to preview, proof, and send your email. Luckily, in the marketing cloud, it, you know, there's a, there's a place where you can 
preview and test. And you guys will go through this later on, but you are able to create, um, and I don't want to get too ahead of it, but you can create a data extension or a list. And in there you can, um, I usually, my process is I usually, I have a Gmail and I have a Yahoo. So I usually create a data extension where I enter my work email, my Gmail, my Yahoo, and um, I have myself as the sample subscriber. Um, and I'll make sure that um, when you look at some of these, you know, the gender and, you know, first name, address, date of birth, I'll make sure that whatever fields I'm using to personalize it, I'll have information in there. Um, so that way I can test it. Right. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to preview the email. What I love about this, this dashboard for previewing and testing is I could toggle. So you see right here, there's this right arrow. So I can toggle between the subscribers that I've entered and based on the personalization, if this email is personalized, meaning right here, you guys see summer shop to sale. Let's say that this image was for males and then the next image is for females. So when I toggle to go through my sample subscriber list, this email should change based on these personalized fields, right? And you'll be able to see it right here in this dashboard. Also, you can personalize the pre-header and you could personalize the subject line. So whatever is personalized in this email, when I go through this toggle, I should be able to see it. The other thing is, is you can go right in here um, and you can preview the layout here of the email and you can also look at it in plain text. Um, it's important for you to look at what the email looks like in plain text because keep in mind that there are some people who have Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook and in their settings they're disabling they're disabling HTML. Therefore what's happening is they're forcing they're forcing text only. So they're not gonna see this summer image. They're not gonna see these icons that you see here, right? They're not gonna see that. They're just gonna see the text. So it's important and a lot of people skip this step. And I think I have an article I wrote on my LinkedIn about this. A lot of people skip this test, this, this test and they only look at the layout and they don't look at plain text. Not realizing that some emails, some ISPs, they strip out the HTML because the person has changed their settings. So you wanna make sure that you look at your layout, you wanna make sure that you look at your plain text. You also wanna make sure that you toggle between desktop and mobile, right? And all of this you'll see in the preview and test dashboard in the marketing cloud, right? So proof one, as I mentioned to you guys before, I have my work. When I was a customer, I would send to my work, my, my two inboxes, my Gmail, my Yahoo. I would send a test to myself. I would look at the email. And then I would look at the, see right here where it says web version. I would always click web version to see what the email looks like on the web because there are people, they, um, who is disabled image, they'll click on this web version so that they can see what it looks like, right? And then I'll always look at what the email looks like on my mobile device. So that's a send, that's a test to myself. And I never, I never skip that. <laughs> I want to make sure that I cover all my bases. Um, so I will make sure that I test on all my email clients, browsers, and most importantly, devices. Um, but most important, after I send to myself, I will ask people on my team, um, all right, now that I've tested this to myself, can I add you guys to my data extension? I'll even, something else that I do, and I don't know if other people do this, but I'll even find people that have different devices. Like I have, the iPhone 7. I'll try to find somebody that has an Android. 
I'll try to find somebody that has a newer model of the iPhone. I'll try to find somebody that has um, Outlook. Or I'll try to find somebody that has, you know, just a, that has a different, um, you know, web client. Because I want to make sure that we test as much as possible and we check off the boxes and we could, with confidence, come back and say, we've tested this email, we know it works, and we're comfortable with sending it. So this is a step that you do not want to skip, is to make sure you send it to yourself and you send it to others. So litmus. Um, litmus um, is Marketing Cloud has a connection to litmus. Um, so there's a big difference. And you see this right here, big blue letters. There's a big difference between clients and devices. Litmus does offer um, 40 plus tests where you're able to see how the email would render on various desktops, um, mobile tablets, and web-based clients. But keep in mind that you will never ever be able to be 100% um, error free when it comes to um, these desktops and mobile, right? Because there's way too many, way too many um, devices out there, way too many desktop clients, right? All you can do is really just make sure the most important thing is your copy, the text version, the text copy, and your CTA are, are clear in your message. Um, but but um, what I want you to get out of this is just know that there is a litmus connection to Marketing Cloud that does allow you to see how the email would render um, in all these um, different um, all these different devices and client desktop clients. This one I covered. Um, earlier and what this is is you know this is just reinforcing the message that you have to send to others it is most important you don't want to skip this test there are a lot of I've been you know in the email world for 13 plus years and if I were to go back to being a client I would still make sure that I'm sending the email to myself as a first test and then the second test I would send to others um, because you you don't want to you don't want to be too overly confident and as much as i know the marketing cloud platform in and out i would never tell people to skip this step um even the most advanced users they still send to others um so never be too overly confident and always make sure that you're testing testing and here's another advice um let's say i went in and i changed um where it says 70 save up to 70 percent let's say i went in and i changed 70 percent to 50 percent right let's say somebody marketing came back and said you know hey team we want to change the text instead of 70 percent 50 percent i would still go back and i would still send a test to myself and i would still send a test to others <laughs> i know that sounds redundant it's like why does she keep stressing this i've seen a lot of mistakes happen where people skip certain steps and they end up sending the wrong email, the wrong copy, and it's just, you know, um, something you don't want to do. So just make sure that you can, you know, continue to send the proof to others. So part of the send is your email is ready to go. Um, you then have your list or data extension, which will be will be covered and then you schedule it so sending mistakes that i've seen is picking the wrong version of the email which is important for you to double check the name the subject line another mistake i've seen is picking the wrong list so you want really want to watch the counts right and scheduling the wrong time um day you know the date you know maybe the day of the week and a.m and p.m so you want to make sure that you want to make sure that you carefully go through this and you're picking the right email, the right list, and that you're scheduling the email to go out the right time. If you have to tap somebody on the shoulder and say, "Hey, can you please just check this before while I'm doing this?" Do that, right? Again, 13 plus years using this. There are some of these that I'm sharing with you guys 
I would still follow them if I weren't to be, if I went back to being a customer, I would still stress the importance of this because I've seen too many mistakes happen where people are overly confident and they send out the wrong email to the wrong list, the wrong date, the wrong time. Um, another thing, I think we've spoke about this earlier, but you know, being um, the marketer, um, you guys, I want you guys to not only understand the features and functionalities of the marketing cloud, but I also want you to be educated in um, what these features and functionalities can do for you. It's more than just, you know, being certified in the marketing cloud and it's more than just, I'm just gonna, you know, send out emails, but there's a strategy to um, everything when it comes to being an email marketer. So in the marketing cloud, there's a feature called A-B testing and A-B testing allows you to test various um, components of, of the, the email, right? You have the ability to test date, time, subject line, creativity, right? Um, body copy, right? Concepts, right? Um, why is that important, right? Well, it, you don't wanna be stale. It's important for you to know what's working, what's not working. Um, it's important for you to know what drives your subscribers to want to click, you know? So right now, if we look at this email here, it says read more. Um, what if you wanted to test the offer, right? Or segment to target conversion rates. What I mean, what I mean by that is, instead of read more, some people will say click here, learn more. Um, it might be a subtle change like, all right, we're gonna send this email, 25% will receive this read more, the other 25% will receive this read more with an arrow. Which one will drive the most clicks? So you could set up an A-B test where you're testing 50% of your subscriber list and then the winning, winning email will go to the remaining 50%, right? I think A-B testing is fun, I love it. Um, and I think it, it, it's, it's not commonly used and it should be used. It'll help you with your overall um, email marketing strategy. So as marketers, you, you, you wanna take a step back and you want to look at all your campaigns and you want to kind of raise your hand and say, you know, the marketing cloud, we, we, we have this feature called A-B testing and here's what we can do with it. We can, um, we could set up A-B tests and the A-B test will help us with X, Y, and Z. But you, it's important for you to put a strategy around this and not just send, send, send which is why, you know, I, I had asked um, for me, you know, to walk in to speak to, to you guys about overall email marketing, because I don't want you to just understand the platform, but not understand the fundamentals of what we, of what I've walked you through now, um, especially like A-B testing. I love it. I think a lot of it's underutilized. So my challenge to you is, you know, when you do get your hands in the marketing cloud, um, don't just build and send emails, but Think about the overall strategy of the email itself. Think about the branding. Think about the placement of the logo. Think about the hero image. Think about are we, how are we doing the email build? Is it a single column? Is it a double column? These CTA buttons, do we want to use read more? Do we want two images? How are we gonna personalize the email? Do we wanna use names? Do we wanna use images? Do we wanna use location? We have all this, 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 we have this plethora of data. What are we gonna use, do with this data, right? To differentiate ourselves from our competitors. Um, what is the CTA? What do we want our customers to do or to know or to act on once they receive this message? Um, and then, are there opportunities for us to A-B test? If so, let's do it. Um, so definitely when you, I don't know if some of you have access to the marketing cloud, if you do, great, look into um, A-B test. If you don't, when you do get access, you know, think about ways that your organizations can, um, think about ways that your organizations can 
can use this A-B test feature in order to make sure that you are sending the right message at the right time to your, um, to your subscribers. So in review, what are some things you need to test before you send your email? Um, what are some mistakes you need to watch for before you hit send? And what parts of an email can you test to um, improve open rates? Um, and then all of this is really things that you want to pay careful attention to. You just don't want to be in that position where you know, you, you sent an email and you didn't test it. You were in a rush to get out the door. Um, I know plates get full, we get busy, and human error can happen with a blink of an eye when it comes to sending an email. And I'm not saying this to scare you guys. I'm saying this because I want you to, you know, really pay careful attention when you're building the email. I want to make sure that you guys are testing the email. I want you to use some of the maximized utilization of the marketing cloud beyond just building building and sending reporting, but how can we use A-B testing to really, to ensure that we are sending the right message to our customers. But it's also understanding when you hit that send button, you know, what do you have to watch out for, right? What are some of the things that can happen to your email um, before it hits the inbox? So all of this is important for you to know as in, because I want you guys to, to be marketers, but I want you guys to be email marketers. I also want you to be strategist when it comes to the entire email marketing, um, to the wonderful world of email marketing. And that is, that is it for my presentation. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Gilda. So can we open that for questions now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Team, we have like another 15 minutes uh, left in the session. So please uh, feel free to like, you know, ask questions that you have from today's session. And, uh, it's not <laughs> always that we get Gilda in, 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 in some of these sessions. Like, you know, she's always very busy. So we were lucky to have her like, you know, speak it as a guest speaker for the session. Uh, hopefully this was like very informative. Um, like, you know, so uh, go ahead. Like, you know, you guys can unmute and go ahead and ask any questions that we may have. Well, I see a question. Oh my God, I love this question. So just want to check how to send high priority emails. So let us, <laughs> okay. Um, you want to be very careful with sending high priority emails um, through Marketing Cloud. So, and Shibu, I know you're going to go through this, so I don't want to go off track, but in the marketing cloud, there are options to change the priority level of your email. You could change the priority level so that it is high priority. However, when you do that, it starts eating up more super messages. And I don't know if we're gonna get into this, but keep in mind that every single orga organization contracts with Salesforce for X number of super messages, right? Meaning this is how many messages I'm gonna send out. And these super messages also include mobile consumption, landing page consumption. So you wanna be very mindful of that. So when you change a party level, to Gmail, which means that the email will be received in the inbox faster than the speed of light. It takes up more super messages than um, the normal priority of an email. So there is an option to do that, but before doing that, that's a larger conversation um, that you should have. And with the marketing team, just make them aware that, yes, I can change the priority level of this email, but it's gonna consume more super messages. Oh, high priority emails. That is, you know, the high importance, that is, that goes back to um, what I said earlier about um, the algorithm that Outlook and Gmail uses. Um, what's important for Outlook and Gmail um, 
is goes back to the deacon keys and the SPF keys, and it goes back to the regular cadence of your of your email. And it also goes back to if you continue sending emails to your subscribers and they continue opening it, right? The algorithm that Outlook and I mean that the Gmail uses will note that this is something that the subscriber is expecting. Um, again, it's one of those things where no one can figure out what that Gmail algorithm is. If I find a document on it, I'll be happy to share it out. But it really has to do with the algorithm that, that, that they use when it comes to setting the priority. Okay, do we have any more questions? Um, there's a question about practice, uh, marking club practice tests. Um, I think you have some stuff, right? So uh, we have, uh, there's a mock test available in WebSSR uh, well. So uh, if you actually, it's I think around $20 if you want to like try it out. Um, so as part of this bootcamp, like, you know, we're just going over like, you know, the basic areas within email studio and marketing cloud and whatever you will need to understand if you need to like, you know, sit for the exam. Um, not sure we would have time to actually, you know, do any, any practice test, uh, during the sessions actually, but if there's any, any material available, we'll definitely be like, you know, uh, available to share. With, with so, uh, I also think, um, Chowhead might have some, some stuff, Sample. um, yep, yep. for the marketing, yeah, for the marketing club practice. Uh, so I would highly suggest that everybody, um, goes to, goes to the Chowhead. And if I find any documentation on the marketing cloud practice test, I saw somebody post something um, yesterday evening. If I'm able to find it, I will share this out with you guys when I come back on the session, I think next week. So let me dig around for some stuff to share with you guys. Cool. Okay, thanks, Azim. Yep. All right, guys, uh, 10 more minutes. Anything else that we would like, that you'd like to ask? Well, so just to confirm, so team, um, like uh, we've, just go through the agenda one more time. I know if you, some of you actually joined late. So uh, we covered introduction to email marketing today. Uh, tomorrow we will actually look at like, you know, take a little time to look at the actual marketing cloud tool. Um, so we'll just go through the introduction and see how it's actually, what are the various tools that we have? I mean, the different sections that we have within marketing cloud. And then we will dive into uh, the good part of like data and the data model within within marketing cloud. Uh, we'll look at list and data extension that Gilda mentioned today. Uh, next week, we will uh, Gilda will be back. She will actually be walking us through design best practices. So please make sure you attend. Uh, Isha is on our call today, so she is also one of our marketing champions. So she's going to be covering a little bit about email deliverability. Um, Aisha is uh, is like a resident expert on content creation. So she's going to have a small session on the 14th about like how to create emails, best practices, like, you know, for, for the content creation part. Uh, following week, we will have sessions on email tracking reporting. Um, and I'll actually help walk you through like automation studio and journey builder basics as well. Okay. So that's uh, what we actually have lined up for you guys over the next uh, eight days as well. Uh, so let us know if you have any other questions. If not, I think we can wrap up for today. Okay, I see a chat. Okay, um, guess there's nothing much. All right, thank you all for joining. So we'll talk to you guys tomorrow, same time. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Good evening, mm -hmm. good afternoon. Bye. Right. Bye. <laughs> Thanks a lot, good night.